Hello everyone, um, welcome to another series of uh, GT practical videos and um, I've gotten a couple of questions from you guys and uh, most of you are getting confused on how to go about the experiment. So I guess in this video I'm simply going to verify that down and um, I've also received a lot of questions asking what if this experiment is actually a mainstream and not a station so i'm going to go through like uh, what you expect to do uh, of the graph is it a straight line is it a curve and all of that so if you think you are also confused about that so just stay tuned till the end of the video now this experiment is an um, experiment to tell me the speed, the speed of each through a bar and as i said earlier in my previous video if you haven't watched that i'm going to put a link to um, the video remember that this is part three of this video series and the part three is simply explaining the part two of uh, the video since i got a lot of reactions um, uh, about the video so this part three is simply going to explain the mainstream um, the mainstream part of this video and also clarify some doubts so that you shouldn't make a mistake now remember that we are calculating the speed of heat through a bar and as i said earlier when we are calculating for speed obviously we are going to look for distance and getting the distance will also need the time because uh, the formula to calculate the speed is a uh, distance all over time and remember that we are going to use this in our inference so here is our setup as we can all see once you've uh, arranged your setup in this order we note, we note that the bar the points a and b the distance between the point a and b is represented as uh, data x now when are you actually going to start your stopwatch you start your stopwatch when the, the candle wax at the point a start melting and you stop the stopwatch when the candle wax at point B starts melting or melt. Now, because you are getting a time interval for heat to move from point A to point B and not from one edge of the metal rod to the, uh, to the point B. So you have to take very, um, very careful note about that because if you make a mistake with that, you're obviously going to get a wrong results. So, this is for the um, station part of this experiment but now what if this experiment is a, a mainstream remember that a mainstream carries like very um, high max and you need to take 10 values of this or even more and you're not going to repeat this experiment 10 times the only thing you have to do at this point is you remove your metal rod you use probably a chalk or a pencil and you mark um, points on your uh, metal on your metal rod you can see you can mark 10 10 um, centimeters on your metal rod once you mark 10 10 centimeters on metal rod you take your candle wax or your candle flames yeah and you and you drop them on each of those um on those dots that you you did mark so once you set up the experiment and you draw you come up with your table you come up with your table um, and you start your stopwatch at point A when it, when it melts at point A you start your stopwatch at point B probably you're going to name it this time around at either point uh, 1, point 2, point 3, point 4, point 5, point 6, point 7, point 8, point 9, point 10 or A, B, C, D, E up to 10 points so it depends on you or you can give it a different symbol you can give it a different symbol it all depends on you and you're not going to penalize for that so that you only stand with your stopwatch with your pencil once point a melts you you indicate the time it has taken point b you indicate the time it has taken point c melts you indicate the time it has taken the timing table from b to c point d you indicate the timing table from c to d and probably when you do that for all the points you're going to come up with your data or with your yeah with your data on the table and you're going to plot um, a distance of time graph 
and obviously the slope is going to be a straight line so obviously you're going to follow the same uh, procedure and you only need to mention the fact that you're going to carry this experiment or do this repeat this process like 10 times and uh, your observation will be actually because equations for a mainstream will be different from the station you know they might ask you to calculate for the gradient in this case our gradient is going to be a straight line and remember since you're carrying an experiment it's not going to be perfect so you are, you are expecting a straight line but it shouldn't be or it's not a must that the graph should be a straight line so it might be a straight line but not all the points are falling on the line because if you do something perfect it's going to be very suspicious so you need to be very careful with that point just make sure that you draw a straight line and the gradient of that line is going to be uh, the gradient of that line is going to be the speed of uh, the gradient of the line is actually going to be the speed of heat flow in this case and your inference will simply be like the formula that you use and you know obviously you're going to conclude with um, with um, the gradient the, the, the speed Obviously, you're going to do your calculations to come to get the speed and you conclude by stating the speed from the gradient that you've calculated and the precautions. So yesterday, while I, when I uploaded the video, I got a lot of co uh, contributions too because your another um, precaution that you, can, you might add is that you make sure that the candle wax or the candle is shielded from wind so that all the heat that are, that are living from the candle goes directly to the metal to the metal rod and not is lost so you just need to like uh, shave it so that all the heat goes directly to it and um, remember that don't use a very very um, use the same quantity of candle wax throughout on your metal rod because if you if you are making it of different um of different sizes the results are some simply going to be different uh, different make sure that you use a small amount like each should have just a single drop not many, not five drops on one line single drops so remember that the explanation is based on the fact that if this experiment was actually a mainstream experiment before you follow these same procedures but if it's still a station know that you're still going to follow this procedure and as i said yesterday if you feel like your results are not okay simply carry it again you're going to get better results or carry it and add the two results take an average that way you you are even showing the gist of examiner that you understand what you're doing and you're going to get better results compared to someone that carries carries in one so um, be very very um, careful with you when it comes to this so I think that is it for this video. I will be uploading um, part four before uh, in some hours to come. And uh, if you would like more, please make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so that when I upload, you'll be notified even without anyone sharing the video to you. So that is it for this video and um, i'm going to put the link to part one of the video and part two and i'll be uploading also i'll, I'll actually have a series or a list of um, other videos which i'm going to share with you all so just um stay tuned to the next uh, videos that will be coming up thank you all and wish you all the best of luck